Hey guys, it's Chris Klass. It's July 31st, 2023, and I'm going to show you a little game that I created uh, called Newton's Apple. It's an orbit simulator. It, uh, it only works on the computer, so it won't work from your phone at this time. So let me just go into it. Uh, so you got to click a start button, which is also up here. Um, oh, I should probably move that. So basically, you start off, the apple gets tossed into some random place in space around the Earth. And you set the velocity. We'll just keep it at 17 for now, just to see if that works. You click, you mouse left click, um, somewhere in space. And that's the direction that the apple's going to go at that 17 velocity. And then you click a button on your keyboard, and it shoots it off into orbit. And... If the apple orbits five times, you've basically won, you know, the scenario. You get a little message. Congratulations, Sir Isaac Newton. It'll just keep going. So here are the instructions and notes. And it basically says, if Newton's apple orbits the planet five times, Isaac will be added to the history books. If not, he will be forgotten. Oh, no. So, yeah, don't, uh, don't mess up history by sending the apple into Earth, where it will come crashing down and hit Isaac in the head. So that's essentially what happens. See? Or, if, uh, if you get it wrong, you might send it off uh, forever into space, and uh, you'll see the apple shrinks. And if it hits, I have it set to 2,000. Uh, adios, amigos. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah, there's like a full screen button here. Um, you can toggle these off. So if your apple is hidden somewhere, when you... Let's see. So you know, you're like, where's my apple at? So it's going to be behind there somewhere. And so we're far away, so let's just get it going kind of slowly. And actually, that's still pretty fast. And look at... Um, So this is the approximate location. Since the apple doesn't leave the screen, that's approximately where it's at, just much further away in that direction. So it just shows the direction. Here's the actual like x and y distance. Oh, it's returning. And as you can see, it's coming back. The x is still pretty far out, but it's going to be coming back pretty quickly. OK, so it's in this weird thing. Unfortunately, it's boxed in here. I, I could update this script so we're like, instead of it getting stuck at the border of, you know, what they provide at scratch.mit, I could have the earth shrink down as the apple f gets further and just like slow the movement away. So that way, like the apple will shrink, the earth will shrink, or the apple could stay the same size. The earth will just shrink as it gets further. That way it doesn't really get into this weird box movement position thing. Um, yeah, so that's what it does. I was thinking about if I wanted to continue working on this, I would create multiple levels. Like if, if you beat the first level, the moon would be added somewhere around here, and then you'd have to try to orbit in a figure eight motion. That's what I'd have it try to do, and then add Mars, add the sun, whatever. I think that'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty fun. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so I just got to keep moving on. This this was part of a, if I haven't said it already, this is part of a, it's like a free Harvard uh, certificate course on uh, computer science. This was like the first assignment. And uh, yeah, they tell you to go to this scratch.mit.edu site, and that's where you create it at. Um, so let me just go inside the script itself. Actually, I can move that now into the proper position. And it should be like there somewhere. Um, there was some other stuff on here. There's like the grid, which is, just looks kind of cool. That's really about it. Um, so let me just go into the meat of this, which is the apple. So when you, uh, when you create a sprite or an object on the screen. It just gives you some that you can add there. Um, so obviously I use the apple, and I use the earth, which is in there, this list somewhere. And then you can add some functions to that. So it's kind of like a class 
these are kind of like an Apple class, and it has some different properties and methods and stuff you can add to it, events, I should say. Um, so it's actually in this, uh, I don't know, the space here. Um, so let me just show you some of the things that happens here. So when the start flag is clicked, I reset a bunch of variables, like gravity and all this stuff. Um, because if you don't reset this stuff, it'll have some crazy values. And so when you try to move the apple the next time, it's going to have some weird starting values. So I have to have these variables reset. Um, and here, every time you click the start button, uh, the apple gets moved into a random position. So that's what this does. But also uh, sets you know the variables you know, like the elevation and gravity and things, distance sector, XY coordinates of the apple. So it gets that information. Um, so that some of this stuff, it comes prepackaged. So when you, all of these, um, you know, like the setting the apple X and this if statement, it's all in this, um, I don't know, it's organized in these buttons here. So you have like controls, you have like the loops, you have the if statements, um, you have a bunch of different things here. Uh, motion. So when you add this motion, uh, I don't know, what is this like a method? So change x by 10 or whatever. This applies to the Apple because I'm in the Apple class. And here's, if you actually just want the x, and Y position of the apple. That's what these are for. And actually, I do use it to set my uh, doppelganger variable of apple X and Y. And the reason I do that is because this program, not the one I created, but the one I'm using, doesn't allow the apple to go outside of these boundaries. And so, like, um, apple negative X will stop at, like, I don't know, 224 or whatever. But I wanted to, this orbit simulator to be able to go beyond that. Um, for math purposes. Um, and so here, look at this. The apple to earth distance. I don't know if you remember this. But you got a square plus b square. Um, and what is the square root of that? Is the apple earth distance. Um, well, this is rounded, but yeah. So that's what you have here. Round apple earth distance. There's gravity, which is the gravity constant divided by the distance square. I originally was going to use like real, the real g constant and all this stuff, and the mass of the apple and the mass of the Earth, but it just kind of got complex, and I wasn't even finished with the script, so it had a lot of bugs, and it wasn't really doing what I wanted it to do. So to simplify it, I just created my own gravity constant and my own math to this that works. Um, and so this actual gravity constant, I have it in the Earth um, class. Here I just set it to 1250. I forget why I set it to there, but it just worked well at 1250. I haven't really played with it since. Um, also in this Earth class, I have, you know, what is the XY distance um, from the center of the screen, which is zero, you know, coordinate zero, zero. So I have it set at 35. So if you're 35, um, I don't know, what do you call X, Y distance from the center? That's the surface. The alleged surface. Um, and anyway, so let's, so that's the initial position. And then here's the next big section here, which is the movements of the apple. And so we have, um, here it says using velocity, apple will launch towards the mouse pointer, but it's affected by Earth's gravity. And Earth's gravity will continuously pull it in towards Earth, but your initial trajectory may keep it in orbit. And look at this, it's kind of cool because it actually will accelerate and de- Accelerate based on if it's traveling towards the Earth or away. Um, so there's some math involved with all of that. And there's also 
Um, it'll, the apple will actually shrink as it gets further away. Well, it's not that far away. Well, now it's kind of... Sh- uh, it's growing, so it's coming back. But if you go really far, the apple will just keep shrinking. Anyways. Let's see. Is it this screen? Yeah. Um, so, when you put your mouse, your pointer, on the screen, the space, and you click any button here, it gets the mouse X and Y coordinates. And uh, that's where it's going to send the apple to, or it's going to try to. But, the, of course, the gravity gets in the way, and it pulls it in towards the Earth. Um, let's see if I can move these comments over. Um, so here I get the distance from the mouse to the, from the apple. You get the ratio, the XY ratio. You know, how much percentage is... Y versus X, you know, is it 75% or whatever? Uh, So that just sets some initial variables. And then here's where the loop starts, and this is what's just going to keep moving the apple in orbit, or unless the exit loop uh, variable is set to 1. Let's see, repeat repeat until it's 1, right? So if you crash into the Earth or if you go too far into outer space, this... uh, We'll trigger one and notify NASA that uh, the apple went missing. The NASA of like the, what is it, 16th century, whatever they had back then. Um, Okay, so now we have apple earth x ratio. So we had that for the mouse and apple, but now we have it for the earth because that is going to, because gravity is, uh, you know, changes based on this. This is basically uses here, used to determine the percentage of gravity's effect on the y, x and y axes of uh, the apple, the position. So if, um, if, if your apple is... Um, oh yeah, so here. The apple is... Um, the gravity is going to pull it in this direction which is mostly uh, negative x. So most of the gravity's of, uh, pull is on negative x, and only slightly on the negative y. So that's how it's going to affect the movement, mainly. Um, so that's what's going on here. Here's set gravity. So you've seen in the Earth class, we had 1250 divided by uh, the distance squared of Apple and Earth distance. Then, which direction is gravity actually going to pull on the apple? Without this, you know, uh, gravity would always be a positive. So it's always, without, without changing the gravity x and y, so do we want gravity to pull or push on the y or x axis? That's what axes. So that's what this does. It's just checking to see if if Apple X is zero or greater, which basically this is just a rigged <laughs> zero or greater, equals to or greater than zero, uh, I don't know, operator or control. And the same thing with the Y. So that means it's in the first quadrant, so the upper right quadrant. And if that's the case, gravity is going to have a negative, right? It's going to pull negative. Uh, so you got gravity times the apple earth x ratio um, and it just makes it a negative so that way it's subtracting from the x axis and here it's subtracting from the y so if uh, the apple's in this first quadrant both the gravity is going to be going negative in both x and y and here we're saying start quadrant so this quadrant is going to be used later to show how many revolutions around the earth it's made You'll see that later. And here it's just, it figures out what different quadrants is in. So upper right is one, upper left is two, three, and four. So that's what that does. The gravity is affected, the gravity pull is affected that way. So once that's figured out, um, here we're readjusting the 
Apple mouse. Here we said it's distance X ratio. So we're just saying like, what was this ratio of X and Y? But when you add gravity to it, so that's every time that this loops around, it's going to update this with the Apple's new position and the gravity's strength, because the closer you get to Earth, the stronger the gravity is going to be. And it's going to be based on a percentage of, you know, is it mostly X or is it mostly Y? Which creates the movement. So when the apple is moved, um, here we have essentially this uh, apple mouse distance X ratio, but we multiply it by velocity because otherwise this thing just creeps along. And this uh, is really like... Um, it uh, the closer to Earth you are, the faster you know the apple is going to move. Generally speaking, because it's as it moves closer, gravity accelerates the apple, and then vice versa in the opposite direction. Here, um, if the Windows boundary is hit, continue modifying the Apple X and Y variables. Though the apple itself cannot leave the screen, so the apple will shrink instead. So that's what I created, the effect that I created here. Um, yeah, so this, this scratch program won't allow the apple to leave the screen, but it just kind of gets stuck at the border um, if you go too far. And so this, but this is also where the movement takes place of the apple. So if the apple axe is outside of the boundary, which is 224, uh, what are these even called on the x axis points or whatever? really just change the apple x variable value by adding x movement, which could be positive or negative. But if the apple uh, x points is less, or is, I guess equals to, or less than 224, then actually move it. So this is like the method that moves the apple on the screen. So once it's below this number, it, it, the apple gets moved. You'll see the movement take place. And we move it by x movement, which we created earlier. But also, here we're saying set apple x variable to the new x position. This x position, if I didn't show you already, is it actually the program, this, this scratch program, has the x and y position of where the apple is at on the screen. But um, because it doesn't, this program doesn't allow the apple to leave that box, it, it caps out at like 224, right? But because my calculations create, um, you know, percentages and things like that, very small fractions of movement, um, the apple, my variable, can, may not match, my apple x may not match the x position when it returns. So I'm just saying that here I'm just resetting my Apple X variable to what the program thinks the X position should be in because that's what's going to show on the screen. So anything outside of their screen, I just hypothetically have this uh, Apple X variable set and changed. And the same thing with Y, which has a different, you know, it's a little bit shorter in the Y, you know, than the X. So. So it's 177. So once that movement takes place, or the number is added to the x, y variable, so the movement takes place. So now we're just really, um, here's the x, y. Let me uh, get this on here. Where is it at? Stats. So you can see I do have, oh, I don't care about that. I can't remove that thing. Anyways, I um, wish I could remove that from the screen. Can't even do anything here. Anyways, so here, this is really the same thing as Apple X and Y, but I wanted it to be smaller on the screen. I don't want it to take up as much real estate. Uh, so I just created a variables that match, that mimic X and Y, uh, Apple X and Y, round it so it's shorter. Uh, Apple Earth distance. So now the movement took, was applied. So now we have to update the Apple Earth distance. And what is that Pythagorean's theorem? Is that uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Um, now, really, this kilometers a second. This is really more acceleration, I believe. I don't believe that this is actually the speed. Oh, look at that. It's going away. <laughs> it's 
it's moving. Um, maybe you guys can figure that out. I think I think that's acceleration, not really. Yeah, it's kilometers a second acceleration, I think. Um, elevation, I just called it elevation, which is really just an xy distance from the center of the screen, which is the Earth or whatever. And the distance sector is what uh, changes, is, is like the flag to change the apple size. So the further it gets, the smaller the apple will be. So as it crosses the sector, the apple shrinks or grows. Um, and this is where it actually changes the size of the apple. So that's like looks, it comes out of there. So when you use this program, you have to get, it takes a couple days, you're going to go through some frustration to find what's available, where is it located at, how can you connect these pieces together. You know, it's just drag and drop mostly, except for these few things you can type in there. Um, so that's mainly it, and then uh, it's just like to, every time it goes in this loop, it checks, is the Apple Earth distance greater than lost in space, which I have... Oh, where's Lost in Space? Is it here? Yeah, so in my space, I guess the backdrop, I put the space. This is basically <laughs> the distance. I just created this artificial boundary of Lost in Space 2000, which is a distance. And then these uh, border X, border Y, high and low variables. Um, anyways, let me go back. Um, so if Apple Earth distance is greater than Lost in Space... Yeah, you lose some points. I don't have it currently showing points on the screen, but if I want to, I could re-add it and say, adios, amigos, because your apple is just lost in space. And then here, look at that. The exit loop is uh, variable set to 1, and so the, the loop is stopped because of that. Here's another thing that might happen. If the apple earth distance is less than the earth's surface, which is 35, then, uh, you know... Ouch, you know, Isaac gets hit in the head. Um, and if none of those take place, um, get the quadrant which the apple is in. So you get the starting quadrant and then the current quadrant. Um, so it goes through this, and um, there's a few things that take place that um, uh, have to happen for these X boolean and Y boolean to be triggered. Uh, so basically, the quadrant cannot, the current quadrant cannot equal the starting quadrant, and the X position has to be less than thirty and whatever. So, so it just shows like, did the X axis axes axes be was it crossed, and is it not in the starting quadrant? Same thing with the Y, and then so that means that the apple had moved out of the starting quadrant. And once that's true, um, and the apple's going around, revolving around the Earth, when it returns, it's going to say, oh, is the quadrant the same as the starting quadrant? And if that's true, that means you revolved around the Earth, orbited around the Earth one time or whatever, add two orbits, add by one. And uh, if, it, if orbits equals five, then uh, congratulations, Sir Isaac Newton. That's basically it in a nutshell. There's, um, I don't remember if I showed you this stuff. There's like grid, just kind of looks kind of cool. Um, let me go shrink this back down. So Earth, we have the gravity constant, Earth surface. Apple, we just showed you all of it. Grid, it just uh, changes the background. Um, so when the sprite is clicked, which is the button, um, yeah, you change these you switch the backdrop. Um, so it just toggles it. The same with velocities, the same thing essentially, and the stats. Except you have a, a few or more variables that are being hidden or shown. And you can see I move, removed points for now. I don't need it. All right, I think that's it. Um, I think that's it. Okay, anyways, have a great day.